Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. My name is Dr. Paul, I'm here with Dr. Stavros. Nice. Today what we're gonna do is go through some of your Reddit questions. You guys are asking great questions about USMLE prep, basic sciences, clinicals, residency. We wanna give you guys some great answers. Before we dive in though, could you do me a huge favor? Hit that like button below. You may as well subscribe while you're at it. Set up notifications and we will let you know every time we release a brand new video. Here's a hint, it's twice a week. All right, Doc, let's dive in with question number <laughs> One. All right. Uh, believe underscore me 23. Effect on 2022 pass or fail? Exclamation and question mark. As an international medical graduate, I'm worried about the pass fail system. I'm in second year of my medical graduation. So I have an option of giving it before 2022 and after 2022, as many people gave um, after completing their degree. What and how will PF affect IMGs? I mean, Doc, honestly, jump on in. I'll jump on after we've answered this sure. many times. But it's good to kind of keep refreshing sure. for future students, you know? Future yeah. Graduates. So, I mean, here's the thing. When it goes past fail, they're, one of the things you're going to have to make sure you do is get a good CK score because that's going to be really the only single numerical objective thing that they're going to be able to compare you to, right? There's going to be no step one, but there's sure. a step two CK. So if you pass step one and you got a 250 on CK, you're looking good. If you pass step one and got a 215 on CK, you're not as competitive. But with that said, um, you want to make sure you pass step one first time. You want to make sure you do well in CK. Sure. But even more importantly is you're going to have to realize there's not two numerical values to compare yourselves to now. So you want to make sure that you come to residency application time with a really well-rounded resume. That yeah. means make sure you have volunteer work. Make sure you have pertinent, relevant work experience. So if you want to get into surgery, do some extra surgical electives, shadow surgeons, get good surgery LORs, make sure you do research if possible, make sure you have a well-rounded resume, CV, whatever you want to call it, because when there's less objective ways to compare people, then they're going to look at everything as a whole. That's going to be more important. You only have one numerical score. Everything else needs to look good. That's my opinion. I've said it a million times. Doc, anything I forgot to add? No, I love it. I mean, it's, it is what, I mean, it's, I know a lot of students are getting concerned, but this is why we do what we do. We give you the advice because we know what needs to be done. We know that there's certain people going to give you their opinion, but this is what you have to do and just push down, study, sacrifice, get yourself up and running. And that's going to transition over to CK to applying for the match and getting into the specialty you deserve and you, you desire. So best of luck. Number one. That's a lot. Stop worrying about how fast you get through your USMLE world questions. Every, I, I just dealt with a question this morning. I filmed something for IG stories. Someone was asking, how do I speed up my review? Don't worry about speeding it up. This is a quality versus quantity issue. If you're trying to speed through your U world reviews, yeah. what's going to happen is you're just going to have to learn that stuff down the road. So why not learn it now when you're in the thick of it, as opposed to realizing later down the road that, you know, because you, only gave 75% to your U World question bank that now you got to learn not 25% of information. So take your time, first of all. It's very simple. What you want to do is go through, <clears throat> number one, make sure that if you got it correct, you understand exactly why you got it correct. Sometimes okay. you might guess. You need to make sure that the reason you're thinking why you chose A, which was correct, is correct. And if you got it, beautiful. Also, I would just say, do it. if you got something, you understand the question 100%, Give yourself a little bonus learning. Go through all the incorrect options. And let's say you're talking genetics. B, C, D, and E were all incorrect. Go through each one and do a little review. So right. if we're talking about genetic disorders, look at B and say, what do I know about this disorder? Talk to yourself a little bit. Do a little review. Do you know everything and anything you need to know about B? Do the same with C, D, and E. Because listen, if you've got five options for every single U world question and you only go over the correct one, Guess what you just did when you finished U World? You only went through 20% of the Q bank. You might, might be thinking, well, I made sure I understood the question. I understood the correct answer. I, I read the explanation, but they're only doing, they're only actually going over the correct version, the correct option. You're leaving 80% of the information that you could pull from that or 80% of the review opportunity from that question, you're leaving it on the table. Take the time to go through all those options. Remind yourself, even if, because I, I had a student in our roadmap program ask me exactly about this the other day. He said, if the, a question, you know, maybe next block, we'll talk about options B, C, D, and E. Why would I waste time going through them now when I'm going to learn about them later? 
Well, if you take a little time to review, review them now, what's going to happen is that's one more time you're reinforcing that information. Sure. And if you do that with the next question, that's a second time. And then if you see it later, it's a third time. Reinforcing and reviewing is the best way to master this stuff. So just because you might see a question about muscular dystrophy on tomorrow's block, why not take the time today to do a quick review? I'm not saying dive super deep into every incorrect option. I'm saying give yourself two, three minutes to go over everything. Just you know, review it real quick. Make sure you understand what you need to know about that. That'll just consistently help you build more and more reinforcement, move it more so into long-term memory. That will help you get that much better. If you follow this strategy, yes, it takes you more time, but I'd rather you put the time in now, mastered it, got a better score, than tried to whiz through it real quick, had to go back and review this stuff all over again, learn it all over again, and suffered your NBMEs, and then went to your exam without the confidence you need to crush it. Do that, you will win. I mean, exactly, guys. You have to put the time in. Don't think you're wasting time, because you're really not. You might think you're saving time, and later you're going to go twice as hard. You're going to try to backpedal a few more times to figure out, you know, you lost a lot of concepts, right? Read the explanations, but don't forget, explanations don't substitute for the actual information, too. So you have to read the explanations, know why it's right or wrong, and you might find you a little more work. you got to go into the textbooks. You know, that's a lot of students. They try to cut corners. Don't cut corners. Honestly, guys, they're both really, really pretty good. Um, and I'll say that pretty good for a reason because, you know, some students might love DIT, others might love boards and beyond. I mean, that's the whole point. Again, from previous videos that we've made, these are the ingredients. These are the resources. Now you have to say, okay, I got to take this resource, the ingredient. I have to sit down and study. How many hours a day am I going to apply to it? What kind of cue banks am I going to use? Is it strong enough for anatomy, for physiology, for obviously studying for step one? So you have to really... Pick a source, try it out, see if you like it. Because we could tell you B&B is the best. And then you sit down and say, well, I don't like it. Well, DIT is pretty good. I don't like that either. All in med ed. Nah, first aid, too high yield. Kaplan, too saturated. Well, okay, what do you guys want? That's the whole point. Yeah. If you, you know, that's why it's important to choose a really good school. If you're about to apply to medical school, if you're in medical school already watching this, if the curriculum is not strong or it's there, but the, the, the study, the, the lectures aren't strong enough, you have to jump out of your comfort zone and say, okay, I'm realizing that the class isn't as strong as I want it to be. That's when you have to open up your books and solidify all the info. Don't wait till later because at that point, you know, time will continue. And when you're done with your basic sciences, you're like, I got to study for step one. I had a poor farm teacher. Path was not that great. You're going to have to do five semesters over again in three months. is impossible. So if you're watching it and you're about to take step one or study for step one, there's many resources. You can ask so many people. DIT is great. BNB is great. Ally Med is great. Just, you know, what works for you. And you have to really pick a choice. Don't jump every two weeks. Don't keep changing and moving around. Yes. Because you'll never get anywhere. You'll see yourself three months later and you'll be in the same spot as you are today. Be careful of that. Yeah. Uh, just one thing I want to throw in here. Yes. Um, over the years, students who have taken DIT that I've worked with, I always say, how was it? Um, and, you know, some like it, some don't. One thing to keep in mind is DIT follows first aid pretty much verbatim. It's basically yep. a way to walk you through first aid. That's not something you should do first. That's something you should do once you really understand the material because they're not going into super detail. They're basically just following along the first aid in lecture format. So, you know, we recommend using first aid a little bit later on once you've really mastered the foundation. So keep that in mind. Um, that's feedback from thousands of students doing that when you're going to go through first aid, maybe the last two, three weeks yeah. is going to be a little more helpful, at least based on the majority of students I've, I've talked to about this. Boards and, boards and beyond, like you said, it's hit or miss. People like it, some don't. Yeah, you just got to put the time in. And, and again, it's everyone's different. So you might take this and use it this way towards the end, like Dr. Paul said. Some students use it at the beginning. You get the wrong advice. You build bad habits. Then you realize, I'm about to take step one. I'm failing my NBMEs. At that point, you know, people don't want to push their test back because they want to save the money, but then they, they score poorly. So you see, it's a lot of, a lot of stuff can go wrong. So start from now the right way, put the time in and you'll do great. Um, all right, Doc, you want to jump in? Sure, sure. Um, number one, don't, don't worry, really worry about what people on forums are saying. Uh, you know, everyone's posting their own experiences. So a lot of people also post experiences without really knowing how they did. Some people will say, I just took the exam and it was so vague, I probably failed. And then they get 240, 250, 260. So I wouldn't really worry too much. Uh, and if you're letting other people's opinions of what the exam was like freak you out, 
that's really? going to just cause you nothing but stress because people are all, they've been doing that since, since we took it way back when you can't really pay too much attention. If you need to use Reddit or, or you're using social media to get advice, that's one thing. Don't just spend your day read. First of all, why are you wasting your time reading what other people are posting? You should be studying. That's the first thing. Um, now, if you go down one uh, comment here, I actually responded just now. Someone says, if it's worth anything, my step one U world percentage was 66%, got a 253. It just depends on, depends on how well you learn from your mistakes. Perfect piece of advice. And that's what I wrote. I wrote a perfect piece of advice. Who cares what your U world percentages are? If you get 90%, but you skip over all of the explanations and you miss out on golden opportunities to learn, you yeah. might go in and get a 210. But if you get a 50% and you learn from those mistakes, then you're going to learn and get better. And then you're going to use NVMEs to identify any more weaknesses, use that to study more, and then you'll do well. Guys, stop worrying about your euro percentages. This is a learning tool. Yeah. It doesn't dictate how well you're going to do. Because like I said, you could get every question right in UWorld, but then if they're slightly differently asked on the exam, because they're not word for word rapid, you don't memorize questions. I've seen people do well in your world, do poor on the exam and vice versa. It doesn't matter. Learn from your mistakes, work on your weaknesses, improve those. You will see improvements. Stop reading crap on forums. And I love it because I posted a video about a week and a half ago on Instagram saying if you're taking your exam eight times soon, like two, three weeks prior, if not more, just pull away from social media yeah. because A, you're wasting time and B, you might start getting like that, that, that negative experience and feedback from people, which can mess with you because then sure. you start second guessing yourself. So I get it. You want to see what's out there. But again, you, you, you're fishing out there. I'll say that we're fishing for a reason because you're looking at thousands of people with their feedback. You don't know their story. You don't know if they're good students. You don't know if they're great students. You don't know if they're you know, studying 20 hour days or studying two hour days, but the other eight hours is busy work. So if someone tells me, yeah, I had a hard time, all right, but I don't know who you are. I don't know if you were really studying or you were vacationing and bike, you know, hiking in, in the woods or kayaking or you actually studying. There's a big difference. So I admire it, but I would say pull away from social media. Hopefully you watch our video, sit down, buckle down, study, learn why you're not getting as high as you want and go from there. That's all. Very simple, guys. I know you want advice, but that's the advice we're going to give you. Study and just assess yourself. Fine tune yourself. You need help, reach out. We can help you. People can help you. But not sure. just random comments from people who you don't know. It doesn't work that way. It's very hard. You know, sometimes there is really good piece of advice, but those are, I, I never commented on someone's response. That was good. One. This, th yeah. this was a good one. Do you mind if I jump in? Because this, Please, go for I've, it. Got, I've got a good piece of advice. So <laughs> when I was in my OBGYN rotation, what I did was I realized there's a lot to know in OBGYN. So you really want to take a foundational approach. What I did was, first of all, I had the board uh, BRS series, the board of view series. But what I actually did was I started fresh with the Kaplan clinical videos. Kaplan's videos are super detailed. What online med ed, while good and what a lot of students use to review, it's not going to be super detailed enough if you really need to dig in. I went through the Kaplan videos. There was a ton of them. It was probably 20 hours of video. I went through them slowly took copious amounts of notes. And then what I would do is I would do URL questions after I finished that. Because I started with the foundations, I didn't just dive into a question that was maybe, you know, something about third trimester dealing with a pregnancy and complications. I learned what's normal. And then I learned what's abnormal. That gave me a foundation. Then when I did questions, I applied that information and I ended up doing really good in OB. And I actually enjoyed it because I felt like I had a good grasp on it. So if you're struggling Using your world is, of course, good, but sometimes students don't really learn as effectively as they could just by doing questions in a random mode and then picking and choosing because, you know, you sometimes you need to start with the basics. And if you're starting too advanced, it might throw things off you. So yeah. try that. Try getting a resource that's really detailed. If you don't want the videos, uh, like I said, I use Kaplan for CK. Try the BRS book. That's going to be detailed enough too. And really just take your time to go through it. Take notes draw pictures, really treat this like you're learning it from scratch. I think if you take three, four weeks to do that and then do the questions, then come back, you're going to notice a huge difference uh, in your ability to answer OB questions. Sometimes you just got to start from the basics and move your way up. And I think that's probably the problem you're having here. And, and this is going to connect with many, and, and I hope it does. 
in OB and any in any rotation, it's very important to really put your heart and soul into everyone. Because even if you don't want to be OB guy or you want to be peds, you're responsible for the material on your CK. Okay, so that's when you have to realize is the rotation strong enough. If not, you have to go home and study. You put it aside. Then what happens is you go to a source like online med ed, which isn't the holy grail of medicine. And at that point, it's like, well, I'm doing that. I'm doing your world. Why am I not connected? Okay, I'll tell you why. Your world isn't meant to give you the knowledge of OB. It's meant to test your skills that you know about OB. So the explanation exactly. that you're reading is only enough to touch basically why that was right, why that, why that was wrong. Then you jump to OME. Okay, great. But that's not medical school. That's OME based upon information, high yield content for OB. So if you're not connecting, you have to backpedal a little bit and really dig deep and figure out you need to know the foundation of OB-GYN. So I, this, this, this applies to every specialty in pediatrics and everything else on CK. It's upsetting. It's aggravating. But you have to stop. You got to go back and figure out why you're not connecting. And if you're reviewing the questions, are you doing them properly? Don't expect your world to be your primary resource of info and also OME. You might have to back, backtrack a little bit and open up a couple of textbooks and figure out why you're not connecting. Guys, it's that simple. But, but you know, looks like she's he or she is willing to yeah. do what it takes. So yeah. follow that advice. That's going to help you build the foundation because you yeah. can't, some of the stuff you need to start from the basics. Like you always say, doc, right? You need to understand normal before you can understand abnormal. So if you get a question about fetal heart tracings and it's a, obviously it's going to be about abnormalities. If you don't understand what normal looks like or is, and you can't identify normal, no then way. starting with an abnormal makes no sense. It's like learning to run before you know how to walk. It doesn't make sense. Build a house from top to bottom, from roof to, to the floor. <laughs> you, you know, they've, awesome. they've tried it for, uh, for they've, they've been doing it, trying that for millennia and it just never works. So, you know, start with the foundation. It just makes the most sense. Guys. Best of luck, Doc. Reach out if you need help. Best of, absolutely. All right, guys, that is it for today. Hopefully that was helpful. Let us know what your biggest takeaway from today's video was. Leave us a comment in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you. If you enjoyed it, you found it to be helpful, please hit that like button. We would greatly appreciate it. While you're at it, subscribe, set up notifications, and we will let you know every time we release a brand new video. Thank you all for stopping by. See you on the next episode. Bye, guys. Hey there. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you spending some time with us today. We've got a couple more great videos. We got one up here. We got one up there. See you guys on the next video.